What's up? What's up? What's going on? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're happy and on your square. Welcome back to uh, this is going to be an Aniram walkthrough of uh, some ideas that I had. These aren't official. These aren't like even blessed by the author or, author or anything. This is just me pulling stuff out of my proverbial behind and throwing it out a wall like this sounds good to me. And I think I really did something here, so I want to show you guys what's going on. So this is the alteration tree. This is the one I want to focus on the most because it went, underwent the biggest changes that uh, I was I was rewriting. I was like, okay, what what would be really cool here? So the biggest deal with alteration, if you'll notice, is that you don't get any type of offensive action with alteration at all. It's mostly support skills, which is great because in base game base skyrim alterations all support skills also right besides um paralysis but i thought it would be really cool to try to make a more offensively minded tree just like with ornator we got a more offensively minded restoration tree uh, i thought doing the same thing with alteration would be pretty cool so that's what this is. The uh, left hand side in the middle is going to be offensive skills. And then the right hand side is going to be support skills. Mostly the best ones for our alternator. So there's a lot of new stuff on the left and a lot of old stuff on the right. So I just want to get into it. At the bottom here, we have alteration mastery. And we also have, by the way, here's uh, the current tree for an IRM for ordinator. So at the bottom we have alteration mastery still works the same way. No casting still works the same way. And then we split off into two branches. You have the left hand side, which is the aura pulse branch, which has all of your offensive skills, and the right hand side with the mage armor branch, which has all of your support skills. So focusing more on the right left hand side to start with. We have Schadenfreude over here. Schadenfreude uh, increases the magnitude, in, which means either the duration or the effectiveness of your alteration spells that target opponents. So if you use something like Wither from Apocalypse or use something like uh, Telekinesis or um, Paralysis, it's going to increase the effectiveness of those. Continuing that trend, we have both a tree for telekinesis and a tree for paralysis and uh, ash shell coming from that perk. So, um, actually, I have these backwards, don't I? It doesn't really matter. So, telekinetic force is from Valkyrie. It uh, increases the damage of your telekinesis. Uh, your thrown items by some number. I think it's like 150 and then 200 or something like that. And then Stupor. Um, that's a new one I made up. It causes you to drain the uh, Magicka and the Stamina from any uh, opponents that you have locked up in, in a Paralysis spell or an Ash Shell spell. So moving forward, these two up here are backwards, but this would be um, Orification on this side. And what Orification does is it uh, it's a, it's a uh, perk from Ordinator. Normally all it does is, um, actually I have these wrong because there should be two levels to this one, to Orification, and there should be two levels to Telekinetic Force, but I'll, I'll digress. So. Orification has a level 50. If your opponent is under a quarter health, it'll transform them into silver worth uh, five times your level. But if you got the level 80 version of it, instead of level 50, and your opponent's below 80% health, and they're paralyzed instead of ash shelled, it'll transform them into gold worth 10 times your level. That is a partial nerf from uh, Ordinator because the regular Ordinator version of this um, gives you 100% uh, 
uh, excuse me, a hundred times the value or their level of, in gold. But um, that is also once per day power. And I'd rather this be a uh, at will power as long as you meet the requirements. Telekinetic Prodigy is from Valkyrie. Valkyrie uh, in Valkyrie basically does the same thing as it does here, which is um, allows you to grab people, <laughs> it allows you to grab opponents. Because uh, normally with telekinesis, you can't grab opponents. And Comatosis does two different things and has two different levels. Um, so, actually, no, I don't think it has two different levels. I think it's just one thing. So, uh, it has two different things, but only has one level. So, Comatosis, what it does is it, um, and I can pull it up as well. Hold up. Just to make sure I'm not misremembering things. Let's go straight to what it's supposed to do. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be level 60 and 90. Ash shell and paralysis effects last twice as long and drain target's health 1% per second. And then additionally at level 90, targets you grab with telekinesis are paralyzed for five seconds. So that's probably where I screwed up because I thought orification was 50 and 80 and I messed that up. But comatose is supposed to be level 90. Alright. Let's go back. Now we have here the light side. So these are all spell, uh, perks that give you some type of light effect. So luminosity, again, I forgot the extra level here. Luminosity uh, has two different levels, level 30 and 40. Uh, the first level of this uh, skill, or this perk skill, perk, kind of sort of both. Uh, the first level upgrades Candlelight, which is the spell that uh, puts a light around your body and it follows you. Upgrades that so that it restores one health per second. And then um, the second level of that skill upgrades Mage Light so that it drains one damage per second from an opponent so and also it blinds hostiles for both of these so candlelight blinds hostiles with 20 feet of you so i hate how that looks on mobile yeah candlelight blinds hostiles within 20 feet of you and heals you one health per second and then target struck by mage light Oh, it's only one level of the skill, by the way, not two. Target struck by Mage Light are blinded and take light damage, equaling uh, 0.04 times your alteration level, and then rounded down for 60 seconds, stacking. Um, so what the math actually comes out to that is just about four at max level. And then once you get some other buffs, you can get some more stuff. All right, photosynthesis. Let's go back to the tree. Um, so if it is raining, if you have water breathing active, if you have water walking active, then you get 1% um, health regen per second yeah it would just restores one percent of your health per second if i'm not mistaken and then on the other side if you have sunlight if like it's sunday if it's sunny outside or if i think it's just daytime i think it's literally just daytime if it's daytime or if you have candlelight active which surrounds you with light you also get another one percent per second healing and then it has a secondary effect. Where excess healing, uh, up to 100% of your health is added to your next light damage spell or effect. And then from there it forks off. So it's 
technically a healing skill, but it's also offensive. And it heals in such a way that it doesn't really step on Restoration's toes. Moonlight Sonata um, is kind of a way to work with the um, the light damage mechanic from uh, the Silent Moons enchantment. And ultimately what it ends up doing is once you uh, at the end of this skill tree, once you power attack, you get a uh, pretty good payoff with a sword beam coming out. But it's going to cost you a lot of uh, your charge on your weapon. Yeah, but it does a whole lot of stuff. There's three steps to the skill. So the first step um, allows it to function in a day, which if you... Base Skyrim has a bug where that already happens, but if you if your Skyrim is fixed, then it functions as well. And then twice as well at night. So you get extra power at nighttime. Then uh, Silent Moon enchantments regenerate 1% charge a sec to maximum. Oh, that sounds broken. So why are you allowing it to do that? Well, because at level 80, you burn off your charge at a very rapid rate. So that's why uh, with these light damage projectiles, and uh, I, I feel comfortable saying, hey, these light enchantments can regenerate at such a rapid pace because you're going to burn them off just as quickly, if not faster. And then Brilliance is the capstone there. All it does is basically double your damage for light. And it's one of the few ways you're actually going to add extra damage to the... Uh, to the mage light here for luminosity besides leveling yourself up and then um photosynthesis can add a little extra damage as well mostly it's going to come from billions doubling that damage all right now we've kind of got a pseudo branch for water here Photosynthesis had a good effect for water, and also we have oxygenated water and cloud burst waterfall, which all care about whether it's raining or you have a or you have a water breathing active or water walking active. So what do those do? Well, oxygenated water doubles your health and stamina regen as long as it's uh, as long as you have. Um, water walking or water breathing effects active and then on top of that if you've been swimming recently or if it's raining you also have 50% faster movement speed and 50% faster attack speed what does that equate to so that's kind of like saying that Argonian is just the best race ever honestly <laughs> if they pick this up they almost I think they always have water breathing active so they can just pick up the skill and never actually have to invent, invest anything into it and they always get the effect for free but otherwise yeah you could just use a cottage recital to get water walking or water breathing and uh, get get that effect um, What's really useful is if you have storm call um, and you're outside, you can uh, always get rain to fall on you and then you can activate that that way. Um, it looks like this leads to perfectly imbalanced, but it doesn't perfectly imbalanced is actually coming from uh, Aurora armor down here. This, there's just not enough room. <laughs> to show that this is a straight line of Cloudburst Waterfall. Uh, we'll talk about Cloudburst Waterfall in a minute. So it's coming towards the middle here is Aurora Armor, which is kind of a combination of both the support side and the offense side. Aurora Armor does a bunch of stuff, so let me uh, make sure I get it right. So increases Aura Pulse is damaged. Did we talk about Aura Pulse? We did not talk about Aura Pulse. Maybe I should talk about Aura Pulse. So, going backwards. 
or a pulse. So it's kind of like Iron Fist, but for uh, mages. So instead of increasing damage with your stamina, it increases damage with your magicka. And uh, it deals magic damage instead of physical damage. That's pretty much the in and out of it. It deals, uh, it also deals light damage. So um, that's also another way we're getting that light damage out. And then if you want to learn more about light damage, you can learn it here. So Silent Moon's enchantment, similar to fire damage, but unlike it, it's applied over one second. So Aurora Armor comes from Aura Pulse. And it increases or pulses damage by the same percent as your magic resistance. So magic resistance, that perk is not in this tree. However, uh, with mage armor active and Candlelight of Water Breathing active, you increase your magic resistance by 20%, 40% of both. And honestly, I need to change this to Candlelight and water breathing or water uh walking so you could just need to have both the candlelight skill and one of the two water skills active in order to uh get that buff and that forks off to uh perfectly balanced and uh that forks off here to perfectly balanced and uh oxygenated water perfectly imbalanced is another skill that does a lot of stuff um, it's mainly meant to justify using equilibrium, which normally uh, eats your own health in order to give you a magicka back. So restoring magicka also restores the same amount of health. So normally you basically stay at the around the same amount of health because you're restoring your magicka, which is restoring your health, but you're also losing health. Uh, depending on your difficulty level, you can lose more health than you regain, though. So just be aware of that. Uh, or you could gain more health than you lose uh, if you're at a lower difficulty level. Because that's how equilibrium works. That's just base game stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, it should highly, uh, it should make it a lot easier to use equilibrium. But also on top of that, if you're meeting all the requirements for Aurora Armor above, so that means you have uh, Aura Post, Available, which means your hands are empty. You have Mage Armor active, um, which means you have Mage Armor to begin with. You have an Armor spell active, and then you also have either Candlelight or Water Breathing active. <clears throat> or Candlelight and Water Breathing or Water Walking. Let's put it that way. So you've met all these requirements to get the 40% of... Uh, buff right if you've done all that then perfectly imbalanced while power attacking will surround you with a autumnal cloak so a cloak of like reddish brown autumn leaves that absorbs 10 percent of nearby hostiles health magic uh, and stamina so it's a it's a good skill for just staying alive it keeps you alive and does a little bit of crowd control around you it's not a huge amount of crowd control. Obviously, you need to power attack 10 times in a row to kill anything. But it does keep you very much alive if you're getting overwhelmed. And it helps refill your magic and stamina if you need that. Especially if you're power attacking as a mage, you're probably going to run out of stamina quite quickly. And then Cloudburst Waterfall. I actually want to start by showing you guys what a Cloudburst is and where I'm referencing this from. So just like this, you see, and you see here, free use, free use, by the way, you see how all that water is just like, boom, and it's coming out of the clouds so quickly. That's what I mean by a cloud burst waterfall. Free, fair use, not free use, fair use, by the way. Um, so anyway, uh, this is kind of a reference to that. Cloudburst Waterfall is kind of like 
the capstone skill, even though Permanent Nerve is really the capstone, Cloudburst Sword of Fall is a, per, a partial capstone. Once per combat, landing after falling for or for at least two seconds with Aura Pulse or Major Armor active causes a downpour of Nature's Wrath in a 10 foot radius, dealing light damage equal to your armor rating to hostiles. So, to me, I envision this skill kind of looking like kind of looking like the picture maybe not uh, well looking like that video I just showed you but maybe not uh, the, the visuals for that are what it would be kind of interesting what it would have to look like to get that kind of uh, that kind of effect and then especially in 10 in 10 foot radius um, but basically uh, it, just have a whole bunch of water fall on the enemies in a nearby area would be the idea. Um, if it could look like, uh, I don't know if you could use the effect from uh, White Runs Waterfalls or what have you, but something like that nature. That's kind of the idea. Um, and then on top of its normal effect, if it's raining or you have a water breathing or water out walking effect active, this also paralyzes hostiles for 10 seconds and removes the cooldown. So instead of being once per combat, if it's raining out or you got the water breathing water walk active, you also get the paralysis and you don't get that cooldown for once per combat. So you can just go ahead and do it again. It does do an absolute truck ton of damage. So that's why we add all those extra conditions to it. And also, it just makes sense since, since we talk about water. Um, Dragon Hide assumes max armor because Dragon Hide, if you don't know, doesn't give you armor, it just gives you maximum physical damage negation. So you actually have to, like, separately specify hey, if Dragon Hide is active, then max armor. Um, light damage to your armor. <clears throat> what else to say about this? I don't know if there's too much else to say about this. It's just a really good skill. Um, yeah, that it's kind of like the signature move, really. I mean, Aura Pulse is just the signature move, but this is kind of like the the special finishing move on um, this throne of Nern, it's a uh, it's actually an old perk from uh coordinator and it's a good one too just increase the level up to 100 from 80 then buff the effect that standing still um for five seconds while holding the spell let me take it back so you can see where these are so cloud burst waterfalls here throne of Nern's here so that uh Basically, it gives you 50% uh, more power in your uh, your spells, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, 30% 30, 30 more power. Yeah. Let's try not to be super OP with it. 30% more power for it lasts 60% longer. And then it also gives you a nice little platform from which you can jump off of in order to activate Cloudburst Waterfall at will, because normally you'd have to have it, the terrain work with you in order to hit that two second mark. Um, and that's the other thing about the paralysis. Since we were talking about paralysis before, down here when you see a uh, glorification, part of that damage and paralysis from Cloudburst Waterfall is hoping that you, you can just basically glorify anything that doesn't die outright from a uh, Cloudburst Waterfall. Um, yeah, we've kind of covered it all for offense. Let me head on back over here. So to support defensive side, Mage Armor still works the way you expect it to. All these kind of work the way you expect it to. Homethal, I want to talk about Homethal for a second. So Homethal, uh, I kind of combined it and Dimension 
a door into one thing and then I gave it more than one level. And then I also put it in front of Vancey and Magic. The reason I did all these things is so that Home With All kind of is a, uh, it's a gateway to Vancey in. And it also is a little bit more useful. I buffed it a bit here. So you can see, uh, Instead of 5,000 feet, <laughs> I just increase it to 5,280 because that's what a mile is. If you're, if you're that close to 5,000 feet, you might as well go to 5,280. Um, and kind of where I'm drawing inspiration from is like this map of Skyrim. By the way, this is roughly Homethal's actual range. So right here you see White Runish, and then 5,000 feet is very close to a mile this is these lines are a mile so yeah it pretty much covers an entire hold almost like uh from white run to riverwood all the way up past the mountains here like 5,000 feet is actually quite a large space if you really wanted to cover the entirety of white run hold you could get very close to it. Um, so 5280, well, well, one mile. Well, and I'm just talking about current. So 5,000 feet is current. One mile is this red line. 5,000 feet is a little bit short of this red line. But I increased it to one mile just, to, just for meme's sake. And then the secondary part, is uh the times 20 duration of cast within 750 feet so when i'm thinking about about uh the times 20 duration part i'm thinking what is the goal with times 20 duration and for me i would want it to be to cover an entire city right so 250 feet doesn't get close to covering all the solitude. Like if you cast that, uh, if you cast that Castle Dower, which is kind of towards the middle of solitude, you would not reach Blue Palace. Um, 500 feet might reach it. I'm not sure. I went with 750 just to be on the safe side there, but 500 might do it. And if I overshot, it is what it is. I think I think 500 is fine too. At least 500, maybe 750. I know with 750, if you sleep at Castle Dower, you could prob you could probably rest at that uh, bed roll that's right outside of Katya's farm, um, south of Solitude, because that's a free resting point. So. That's also what I'm taking into account. Solitude, which is the longest city, what hits all of it and then allows you to rest right outside of it for free. And yeah, I'm thinking that this here, 750 feet is probably optimal for that. And then on top of that, uh, you're getting the second home at all at the location where you earn that one. So the idea is that maybe the player, if they're not really that experienced with Ordinator, they'll just take home with all because they want Vancey and Magic. They don't want to want to get set up with it. All right, fine. They take it wherever they want to take it. Usually that's probably going to be a white run somewhere since it'll be earlier in the game. Um, so if you take it in Bleak Falls Barrel, you'll still get most of white run hold, including white run itself, including Riverwood. So you're, getting actually, you're actually getting quite a good like, honestly, when it comes to Bleak Falls Barrel is probably one of the best place to take it. Uh, I don't know how that interacts with the outside area uh, because this is inside of a dungeon and not outside. But assuming that, that it works outside when you take it inside, that's actually one of the better places to take because you get Lake Illinata. I think you might get Falk Reef. Let me check the map real quick. I have more than one map open. Yeah, that's how many, 
That's how close 5,000 feet is to a mile. By the way, you can see how, how much thought I was putting into this. <laughs> yeah, so here's Bleak Falls Barrel right here-ish. 5,000 feet is quite a big distance. You're definitely covering White Run, Falk Reef, Riverwood, Helgen. I think, I'm pretty sure you're getting, hold up. It's within, it's within, yeah, it's within 5,000 feet. So within 5,000 feet is even more space than that. Because think about it this way. 5,000 foot is the radius. So really, you could be right here, right? You could be right there. And you can get most everything in a circle from there to there. Like from here to here, you can get everything in that circle. So if you set one up in Bleak Falls Barrow, you'd easily reach almost to Marth Morthal. And if it was actually a mile, you'd actually reach Morthal proper. You'd reach all the way over to, you wouldn't reach Markarth. You wouldn't reach Riften, but you'd hit borderline everything else that you could, that you could want. Like, Bro of the World, High Hrothgar, easily within your reach. Yeah, you just have a gigantic bubble. It is kind of a waste because over here you're, you're missing space. That's why White Run would probably be even better. Because if you do it in White Run, you're just basically getting the entire... I don't know if uh, White Run reaches quite to Falkreath. It doesn't, I don't think. Yeah, White Run doesn't reach Falkreath. Or no, I'm tripping, it does. For a mile, it does, just barely. White Run has less waste, but at the same time, I don't think it hits as many good places. Because a lot of the area around right one is like barren. Whereas Big Falls Barrow just hits a lot more good stuff, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem with uh, setting up home with all the first time. If you only get one, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's like, oh, uh, you have to think so hard about what exactly are you hitting? Like, where, what do I want? To get out of this to, out of this cast from the white run fast travel point i think 5,000 feet barely misses everstead but it definitely gets to higher roster all right yeah so it's, it's always interesting to think about this type of stuff Just how big that circle is. But yeah. Um, so to make that circle about 5,000 feet and then make the smaller circle for sleeping, another uh, 750 feet. And then the second home with all, the idea is like the first home with all is just like, you, you need to get through it and it's gonna give you a nice little buff wherever you take it. And it's going to cover basically an entire hold, probably a hold that you're busy in, like towards the beginning of the game. The second time you take home a thaw, it's probably be specifically to get the buff for uh, advancing magic, which means you're going to set it up somewhere safe. So the third time you take home a thaw, you get dimensional door, which gives you a doorway to your second home a thaw because the idea is. You probably set it up somewhere safe where you'd want to come back to on a regular basis to sleep for your advancing magic. Uh, that's why the dimensional door is set up at the second home of thaw instead of the first one, because the first one's probably not strategically thought out, but the second one is. And in any case, you get a milestone for free that takes you to all your home of thaws. 
um, if I'm not mistaken, at this, if you set up a home with all in the temporal mirror act, you could probably reach everything in uh, Soul Stain, which probably isn't that useful because I, because I don't think there's anywhere to sleep at the temporal mirror act, but um, it's a worth the thought. <laughs> Probably want to set up in Raven Rock so that you can actually sleep there. Hmm. What else? Okrado's prep. If you guys don't know about Okrado's preparation, it is a awesome perk from Valkyrie. It gives you the strongest armor spell that you know for free when you enter combat. I nerfed it a bit and lowered the level quite a bit so that you could uh, cast it. Well, you could get it much earlier in your playthrough, but also it only works if uh, you're, you don't have armor equipped. So basically it gives mage armor builds, you know, more to work with. Mm. And the rest of the stuff is self-explanatory, honestly. It's not all that much complicated about what's going on in here. But yeah, that's all. those are all of my thoughts concerning uh, Alteration. Um, I might do another follow-up video for the other trees, and I'll just do all the other trees in one video. I don't have a fancy graphic or anything for those. I'm not going to make another one of these, uh, <laughs> another one of these trees because I didn't do anywhere near as much work on the other trees as I did on this one but um yeah as always uh appreciate your time and if you made it to this far in the video you're awesome peace